Everyone is aware of the Titanic disaster. Titanic sister ship, the Britannic, sank after hitting a naval mine. The third sister, the Olympic, collided with the British warship HMS Hawk, which left a huge gash into the starboard side. An Irish woman working for the White Star Line as a stewardess survived three of the most catastrophic ship disasters of the 20th century. This is the story of Violet Constance Jessup, often referred to as the Queen of Sinking Ships or the Miss Unsinkable. Violet was the oldest daughter of Irish immigrants William and Catherine Jessup. She was a survivor from the beginning. She was the first of nine children, six of whom survived. She became very ill as a child with what is presumed to have been tuberculosis, which she survived despite doctors' predictions that her illness would be fatal. After her father's death, the family moved to England, where she took care of her sister and attended a convent school while her mother worked as a stewardess. After her mother became ill, Violet applied to be a stewardess. Stewardesses in that era were generally middle-aged women. Violet was rejected from a few jobs because the interviewers thought she was too young and attractive for the job and would be a distraction for passengers and crew. Eventually, she had to dress down to make herself look less attractive and at the age of 21, she landed her first stewardess position with the Royal Mail Line aboard the Orinoco in 1908. Violet worked very hard and gradually worked her way from working with third-class passengers to first-class. She even had a brief relationship with a fellow crew member named Ned Tracy. Violet admitted that she secretly disliked big ships, but since the pay and tips were better, Violet reluctantly began working as a stewardess for the White Star Line vessel RMS Olympic. On 20th September 1911, the Olympic left Southampton and collided with the British warship HMS Hawk. Two of the watertight compartments of the Olympic were flooded, but the Hawk suffered massive damage to her bow and nearly capsized. There were no fatalities, and despite the heavy damage, both the ships were able to make it back to port without sinking. Jessup chose not to discuss this collision in her memoirs. She continued to work on the Olympic until April 1912, when she was transferred to the Titanic. Violet had a nightly ritual of walking on the upper deck to breathe some fresh air before getting back to her cabin. On one such stroll, she met Thomas Andrews, the designer of the Titanic. She said that he was cheerful but seemed tired and sad about getting further away from home. Violet mentioned that the crew was fond of Andrews, who had ensured that their cabins were a lot more spacious than normal. Four days later, on 14th April, Titanic struck an iceberg in the North Atlantic and sank about 2 hours and 40 minutes after the collision. Violet was asleep when Titanic struck the iceberg. She got ready and went up to help the other crew. She was later ordered into lifeboat 16, and as the boat was being lowered, one of Titanic's officers gave her a baby to look after. The next morning, Jessup and the rest of the survivors were rescued by the RMS Carpathia and taken to New York City on April 18th. According to Jessup, while on board Carpathia, a woman, presumably the baby's mother, grabbed the baby she was holding and ran off crying without saying a word. Many years later, Violet would be reminded of this baby under unusual circumstances. After arriving in New York City, she later returned to Southampton. During the First World War, Jessup served as a stewardess for the British Red Cross. In November 1916, she boarded the Britannic, the younger sister of the Titanic. The Britannic hit a mine and started sinking rapidly. The crew started lowering the lifeboats even before the propellers of the ship were stopped. As the ship sank further, the still running propellers rose above the water surface and started sucking lifeboats under the stern. Violet suffered a traumatic head injury as she jumped off a lifeboat that was being drawn into Britannic's still turning propellers. Later, she would discover that she had actually fractured her skull. Britannic sank within 55 minutes, killing 30 of the 1,066 people on board. After the war, she went back to working on the Olympic. She continued to serve aboard ships and just before Christmas 1950, 
A 63-year-old Violet signed off the Andes and retired from her remarkable life at sea. After her retirement, Jessup claimed to have received a telephone call on a stormy night from a woman who asked Jessup if she had saved a baby on the night that Titanic sang. Jessup replied with a yes. The voice then claimed that she was that baby, laughed, and hung up. Violet's friend said that it was most likely some children in the village playing a joke on her. But Violet had never mentioned the story of the baby to anyone before. Records indicate that the only baby on Lifeboat 16 was Asad Thomas, who was handed to Edwina Trout and later reunited with his mother on Carpathia. Violet was discreet about her personal life. She married John James Lewis, a man elder to her by a decade, for a brief period but it only lasted about six months and she never had any children. There were reports that her husband was already married with three children when he married Violet. Violet Jessup died of congestive heart failure in 1971 at the age of 83. Violet wasn't the only one to survive the three disasters. Another man named Arthur John Priest, a stoker on the Titanic, survived the same accidents in addition to surviving the sinking of two more ships. He thus survived a total of five sinkings. Due to these incidents, Priest gained the moniker the unsinkable stoker. Thank you for watching and if you found the video interesting, hit the like button and consider subscribing to Seanvolution for more such content.